Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. Delighted again to be joined quite a short succession of time. It's like buses, isn't it? Wait for you for like three years. Oh, stop moaning, will you? I'm here, and I? You've had a haircut and a shave, haven't you? No, it's just a shave. Yeah? Do you know what? I never clean shave, and I did the other day. What are we thinking? It looks all right. Can you let me know in the comments or whatever you do, or I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Your hair looks different, though, as well. No. No, no bro, a little bit short around the sides, maybe. Same, same. You know, a little, little, little fade up, son. You know, it's what we do, us 44-year-olds, you know. Mind you, you wouldn't think I was 44 with a shave, would you? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Down the UFC gym this morning, big session, ice baths. Oh, unbelievable. You and Dana? I'm actually going to meet Dana in one hour. Are you really? Yeah, I would just say one thing, right? And I don't mind... When when credit is due, credit is due. And I don't mind when people say, oh, Eddie's so far up Dana's ass. The UFC is unbelievable. Like when I went to this facility today, that is like the dream for me to have a facility like that for boxing and my, and my team. It is unbelievable. Like incredible. Anyway, thank you for Dana White for letting myself, but more importantly, the boys use it this week in Vegas. Okay, a uh, little recap from the weekend. Um, yeah, it wasn't to be um, for Mr. John Ryder um, against Jaime Munger. Yeah, I think um, John, tough as old boots, never gave up, would have kept going all night. I thought Tony Sims was spot on with a stoppage. You know, he'd been down four times. The first knockdown was a flash knockdown. The second one was kind of balance. The third one was concerning because it was like a delayed reaction on the top of the head and you know, the fourth one, and it was time to, to stop the fight. Um, Mungir really impressed me, to be honest with you. Like, I know that he's always had a high output, but there were things that I felt John could do, like outbox him, like, you know, use the southpaw stance and his jab, and particularly outmuscle him on the inside. But he's really strong. He doesn't stop throwing punches. He can whack a bit as well. And I, I really enjoy watching him. Mungir, I became a little bit of a fan on Saturday. Nice guy. Hope he gets the big fights. But, you know, John gave it everything. Wasn't good enough on the night. But been a great run. Whatever he decides to do, I think, you know, he'll have a think about his future. And it, I'm just very proud of what he's done and, and what we've been a small part of helping him do on the back end of his career to really set him up for life. Mm. Um, and over in Belfast, great win for uh, Crocker. Sensational knockout. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think he was a little bit hard done by because... He wasn't allowed to make the weight. He could have made the weight, but with the check weights on the board, and I think, you know, those check weights are, are good ideas. They said that he couldn't come in under 150. So there was a little bit of a size disparity because Felix is coming up anyway, but he still did a fantastic job on him. He's a, he's a real handful, going to be involved in some great fights. I thought Chev Clark was fantastic. You know, it was a good fight for him, but the way he went over there and just dominated McCarthy in his backyard and also very exciting, very exciting to watch. I hope that, Isaac Chamberlain vacates the belt now and doesn't mess us around. So we can get that fight made for the British title against whoever that may be. Uh, Paddy Donovan, good win. Obviously, a lot of people talking about the potential fight with Lewis Crocker. And Conor Walker as well. I thought, uh, you know, I, I really like him. I think he's a great addition to the team. And, you know, good win for Lady Buttlejig and George Vizioli, just fantastic. Second show, real knockout. Great card, great atmosphere. Irish boxing's buzzing. Absolutely. Um, let's turn our attentions to this week. Um, Cosmopolitan, Las Vegas. Um, talk to you about the scheduling of the main event. It's going to clash, isn't it? With Boatsy. Yeah, it's a bit... Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's a bit weird over here. Obviously, Connor Ben's a massive draw in the UK and we wanted to make sure that, you know, we could hit the audience and the numbers for the UK time zone. We'll be 10.30 ring walk. So I think that I would expect them to go a little bit earlier with Boatsy, but... Who knows? Um, and for Connor, it's a dream, you know, to headline in Las Vegas on a strip. He's had a lot of attention up here. His name's everywhere on the strip. Um, it's a great opportunity for a few other Brits on the card. Johnny Fisher, Jimmy Sainz, uh, George Liddard as well. Some great fights for Amo Williams and Khalil Co. So it's a big night for Connor. You know, every, any time that a Brit gets to headline in Vegas, many don't. But he's buzzing. Looks sensational. 
just did the first head to head. Dobson's piping right up. He's up for it. And I think you're going to see an explosive performance from Conor Ben to really make a statement. And, and we must deliver in those big fights next. Yeah, it's one of these fights that Conor Ben really, obviously, it's not like the fight that he would have probably have preferred, but it's the fight that he's having. And it's important for him not to kind of um, overlook Dobson in the slightest because we've seen these situations before. Yeah, Do Dobson can fight. He's, you know, he's from New York. He's had it pretty tough. He's undefeated. He's really a 154-pounder. Um, you know, we had five weeks to make the fight. I didn't want to wait till April or May for Conor Ben to fight. Let's get him boxing twice in that time. So, you know, of course, he's got aspirations to fight, not just the, the domestic guys, but even bigger than that, Crawford and Boots. And they're a long way from Pete Dobson. So he's really got to go in there and do a job, smash him up. And I think he will. I think this is going to be a devastating performance from Conor. Um, but Dobson won't quit and he won't back down. It's a massive chance for him and... I'm looking forward to it. Can you almost guarantee, obviously, comes through Saturday, a pay-per-view fight for his next fight? Well, obviously, you're dying out for a UK pay-per-view. Um, Starving. Look, Conor Ben can fight anywhere in the world. Bizarrely, other than the UK at the moment. What is the situation um, with that? With, with the British Boxing Board of Control, which is what we want to do. So there's an appeal coming in February, and then hopefully wins that again, and then hopefully we can just carry on. Because it's dragging on, it's dragging on. And look, there's a lot of talk about big fights in the UK right now. We need to make one. You know, whether that's Connor against um, Eubank, Connor against Brooke, Connor against Liam Smith. I like all those fights. But hopefully we can just win on Saturday, win the appeal again, and then everyone will let him get on with, with his business. You know, it's great that he can fight all over the world, but we, we really want to make that big fight in the UK. So take care of business Saturday and hope everything follows. What's, um, have you had a little uh, Chinese with uh, Big John yet? Not yet, no, because I got in yesterday. So I haven't, I haven't seen him yet, but I'll see him tomorrow. Um, bring in a, a few hundred out here as well from Romford, which is unbelievable. It's going to be a great little crowd. Like I said, there's four Brits on the card. So it's a massive opportunity for them. And big night for Johnny Fisher. You know, he's actually got a tough fight. Tough Ukrainian. Um, who's in good shape and, and you know, has had plenty of notice. So big moment for him. And a lot of the Brits. Like the experience for Jimmy Sainz and George Lillard is just incredible. You know, they've been training at the Matrim Gym in Los Angeles. And, you know, big night for the Brits here in, in the Las Vegas Strip on Saturday. Okay. Um, any development with Catra and Taylor? Any more talks regarding broadcast? No, just what I said the other day, you know, I think the conversations between myself and Sam Jones and Jack, which were, you know, we want to see you land a big fight. And, you know, we the zone feel that's not a pay-per-view fight for them. But I said, if you can get that on pay-per-view on another platform, let's do it. Let Jack go and take the fight. You know, we'll work together as a team come back after and be involved in another big fight when he beats Josh Taylor. So hopefully that can happen. And I know Sam Jones is talking to other broadcasters at the moment and he'll be back to report to me with how that's going. What's happening with Shannon Courtney? Nothing really. I mean, Shannon Courtney had two opportunities to fight Nina Hughes. The first one she wasn't ready for. The second one, the date, you know, she couldn't make for personal reasons, but... You know, I spoke to her the other day um, and obviously Ebony Bridges is looking for a fight. I said to her, maybe that's a fight that really? could materialise. Really? Yeah, there hasn't been any deep, there hasn't been any major talks on it. It's just mentioned in a conversation. So, you know, both of those girls are looking to get back into world championship contention. Sometimes they're the kind of fights to make, but we'll see how that progresses. Uh, weird one. Were you being Saudi for Fury Usyk? Absolutely, yeah. We've got Jai Opatire and hopefully Mr. Caldina as well. So we'll have two world title fights on that card. So, which is great because I'm I can't wait to watch the fight. You know, I mean, one I can't wait to be in Saudi. The whole boxing world will be there for for a massive moment for the division, massive moment for boxing, and you know I'm really excited for the fight, Usyk Fury. I, I don't really know what's going to happen, um, but hopefully our boys can get the wins and then I can sit there and, as a fan and just obviously I'll be cheering for the Brit as much as I love Usyk I want Tyson Fury to win one because he's British and two because obviously it could set up something major with AJ but I, I really can't wait to see the fight I mean it's, it's interesting I was going to ask you obviously I would assume that you'd want Fury to win because of the 
what potentially could be after. Yeah, but you know what? Like, I know that we've had our back and forths over the years, but I have a lot of respect for him. I mean, firstly, for what he did to get back from where he was. I think it was incredible. Two, I do rate him very highly as a fighter. And every time I've been around him, we've got on really well. I mean, I actually think he's, I mean, he knows he's boxing inside out. Um, we all say things sometimes in interviews that, you know, he said this and he said that, but I, I respect what he's done. I respect him as a fighter and he's, he's a Brit and I want him to win. You know, of course I want, I also want AJ to beat and and then try and make AJ against Fury. But I also respect Usyk. You know, we worked with him for a long time. I think he's an unbelievable person. I think he's an unbelievable fighter. But, you know, some some people are a bit weird where like, they don't want specific people to win. I want Tyson Fury, a British boxer, to win that fight and go down as a real great. And I'm pleased he's taking the fight because I said in interviews before, it was frustrating because that is the fight that will make him a great. And I feel that beating Klitschko was incredible beating Wilder for me there's still some doubt doubts over Wilder but beating Usyk for the undisputed that kind of leaves nothing you know to to chance in terms of the debate about him being a great of our generation so respect to him and I, I'm really looking forward to it's what boxing needs and I know thank you his excellency is a word that gets you know a phrase that gets pushed around a lot these days in boxing but genuinely Without his excellency, this fight wouldn't get made. So enjoy, tune in, and um, yeah, looking forward to just being there for a couple of our guys and watching a great fight. Do, do you think it's um, that Fury couldn't call himself the best of this generation? Yeah, say he used to beat Usyk, but he doesn't fight Joshua. Do you think? Yeah, that's... he says he can. Yeah, look, for me, he's, if if AJ beats Ngannou well, I think he's got to beat. AJ to be the greatest of all time of our generation. But, you know, I get his argument as well. Usyk beat AJ twice, but Styles make fights and, you know, if he becomes undisputed, then he's, you know, it's a, it's a massive achievement. But I would love to see him fight Anthony. I think the whole world would as well. And you stick on your opinion, Joshua? Not I do. You know, I, I, especially at the moment, coming off the Wilding performance. And, you know, if he, if he does a job, on Ngannou, I think I, th I think he can beat Fury, but Fury Fury proves me wrong every time, and that's why I'm not going against him in this fight. Even after the Ngannou performance, I believe he's going to win the fight. Um, did you see John Fury's comments about Froch today? Did you see that? Only literally about an hour ago, and I didn't really listen to the whole thing. But yeah, Carl's. Uh, I'm actually going to meet up with Carl when I get back and just sort of have a little catch up. Carl's quite outspoken, you know. He's going to rub people up the wrong way. Frotch on fighting, check it out. It's quite entertaining. Um, but yeah, I just um, yeah, John Fury had, uh, obviously wasn't happy about Frotch's comments about Fury's resume. I mean, um, just to yeah, Carl, look, Carl. Carl has a great resume, and I think sometimes he feels that he didn't get the credit that he deserved. And actually, I agree with him but he really just started getting a profile late in his career. Um, it's, a, it's a problem when you do this punditry work, especially with Frotch on fighting, where you really have to have sound bites and give your honest, brutal opinion about certain things. And you're always going to piss people off. This is a problem I've had over the years. By doing millions of interviews with you, I end up pissing everybody off because you take a little clip out of it. You know, what are you looking at like that for? You know what you do. Don't, oh, what if we do that? Turn slams Fury, no, no. but and I might go like this: I might I make a comment about Tyson Fury, and then say I think he's unbelievable, great fighter. But you don't put that in the headline. You don't go. Hearn says Fury's amazing, great fighter. You just say Hearn slams Fury. So on this one, make sure you put Hearn. I want Fury to win. He's, I don't know, whatever I said. So, yeah, Frotch is Frotch. John's John. We need them. We need them. They're all, as Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. And we need these guys in the grand scheme of things. Canelo. Um, Charlo and Crawford, apparently. Yeah, I don't like the Charlo fight. I've got to say, I think he's a real dud. I don't know why he doesn't fight Jaime Munguia, then fight Benavides. That's the two fights for him. I mean, Crawford's an intriguing fight. But it's three divisions below. 
Um, but he's good, you know. Obviously, Crawford's amazing, so it would be would be fun. But for me, I'd like to see him fight Munguia and then Benavides. I think that would be a great Mexican run. Mm. Um, we've seen your comments um, too, or about Ryan Garcia um, regarding Devin Haney. Any more on that? Has anything developed? No, I'm seeing Bill and Devin tomorrow. Um, I know they've been talking to Ryan and back and forwards, and obviously it's a great fight for DAZN. I think it's the fight to make. You know, Ryan tried to get Roley, couldn't get him. Now he's um, obviously looking to to fight Devin again, and hopefully there can be an agreement. Um, I, think, I think it's the the right fight for everybody. What well, um, you did a little face off, didn't you, with uh, De La Hoya? Yeah, it was good. How was that? It was good. Like Oscar talks a great game about working together, and I hope he's genuine. Sometimes, like he had a couple of snide comments in the presser after, and sometimes his facial expressions tell me I'm not sure if you quite like me. Really, do you really want to do business together? But hopefully, everything he says is genuine. Um, he's great for the game. Again, look, he's another absolute legend of the sport. Um, Just to quote what he said actually on boxing scene, he said, "And all." Golden Boy Matchroom Showdown. I'm not sure what fighters I can put my fighters against his. I just don't know. I don't know if he has the talent in his stable. Yeah, I mean, we have, I think, a dozen world champions. As I said, I think he's got three. Um, but like, on the top end fighters that we work with, like Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney, Jaime Munguia against Edgar Belenga, Virgil Ortiz against Madrimov or Conor Ben even at 154. But they're all very competitive fights. But then when you go, you look at the depth of our talent, you know, Again, like fighters that, you know, you could do Pacheco against Munguia. Um, you could do, they've got Shane Mosley Jr. could fight Pacheco. You've got um, Zapida could fight Andy Cruz. It's an incredible fight down at Lightweight. Um, oh, there's so many. Alexis Rocha could fight Conor Ben. Um, Jojo Diaz could fight Joe Caldina. I don't know. I mean, like, there's just... There's so many fights to make, and I fancy our chances, but he didn't seem that keen, in all honesty. No, he didn't. Uh, work on it, Eddie. Uh, you haven't pissed anyone off while you've been out there? Been Actually, right? no, I don't think so. It's been unbelievable. Not yet. Not yet. This is a new diplomatic Eddie Hearn. I'm just, I'm just chilled. We've got Frank's over in Japan about to announce a big uh, tournament over there tomorrow, I think. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then we start. We're in Vegas, and then we're back next week for a next-gen then it's Fury Usyk. Then it's back to Orlando for Belanger against McCrory. Then it's Ray Ford against Komatov for the world title. And Mexico, uh, AJ against Nganu. And don't forget as well, March 23rd, Dalton Smith, Sapida, Sandy Ryan against Terry Harper. Um, Ishmael Davis against Troy Williamson. Campbell Hatton against Fitz. A great card. Tickets now on sale, Sheffield Arena. Do not miss that one. All right. So you've only planned up until what? April. Eight, yeah, eight, but there's lots more to add in the meantime. So, got some big ones coming for you, boy. Pay-per-view, yeah? Don't you worry about that, son. Pay-per-view. <laughs> but i got to go. All right, Edward, thank you very much for your time. Um, Andy's out here, isn't it? Uh, Colm. Colm, all right, I'll catch up with him tomorrow. Colm's there, all right? All right, mate, catch you Stop soon. Man. Thanks, Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook. 